So imagine a cube six miles across deep and high, and that's how much lava came out. Beneath the tranquil facade of Yellowstone National Park lies an ominous secret that has captivated minds and instilled fear for decades. A sprawling cauldron of molten rock known as the Yellowstone Caldera holds the potential for destruction on a global scale. But recent events have taken this looming threat to an entirely new level. Scientists are racing against time to comprehend the significance of these colossal cracks. But what could these cracks signify and could they foreshadow the awakening of the fiery behemoth that lies dormant below? Join us on this riveting journey as we unlock Tucker Carlson's dire warnings of a 100 feet fissure crack on Yellowstone volcano that cannot be ignored. Nestled within Yellowstone National Park is a place that has something for everyone, making it a favorite spot for visitors from all around the world. One of its remarkable attractions is the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone, a breathtaking site carved by the powerful Yellowstone River. Stretching for an impressive 20 miles and plunging to a depth of 1,200 feet, this canyon boasts the Lower Falls, where the river cascades an astonishing 308 feet, double the height of Niagara Falls. The river's forceful descent slams into the canyon floor, sending up mist and foam that drenches the surrounding rocks creating a perpetually damp environment. Above the waterline, vibrant green moss thrives, painting a scenic scene against the backdrop of the canyon. This moss, growing high above the water, is an iconic and widely captured feature of the canyon. Tucker Carlson said, the river, as it races along, appears green due to the presence of algae and moss. Interestingly, even though the water looks green while foaming, it's clear once it settles. According to Carlson, Another natural wonder within the park is the Mammoth Hot Spring. This captivating formation is a result of the harmonious collaboration between hot water, minerals, and limestone. The process involves calcium carbonate, known as travertine, dissolving from the underlying limestone and being brought to the surface by hot springs. The terraces and springs come in various hues due to the minerals, creating a truly captivating display. Despite the ebb and flow of some springs and terraces, Yellowstone's water flow remains astonishingly consistent. Within the magnificent Yellowstone National Park, some places will truly captivate your imagination. Take, for instance, Minerva Terrace. If you look closely, it appears like an intricately designed staircase, but it's entirely natural, said Carlson. This striking formation is a wonder to behold. But that's not all. There's the mud volcano area, and you'll catch its distinct scent before it comes into view. This aroma is due to sulfur, the same element responsible for the mud's bubbling and hissing sounds. Interestingly, Carlson believes that the sulfuric acid present in these bubbling mud pots causes a slow transformation of the surrounding land, resulting in a strange and captivating atmosphere that's unlike anything else. Venturing further into the park, you'll encounter the Upper Geyser Basin, a treasure trove of geothermal marvels. It's home to the world-famous Old Faithful Geyser, a spectacle you won't want to miss. If you're eager to witness a geyser's eruption, this is the place to be. The park experts even predict the eruptions of five significant geysers in this area, making it a prime location for this fiery natural phenomenon. Speaking of fire and heat, Tucker Carlson explains that Yellowstone has a deep connection with volcanoes. The effects of this geological force are evident all around the park. However, something new and unsettling has recently emerged. Within just a single day, a massive fissure, measuring a whopping 100 feet wide, formed in the park. This unexpected event led park authorities to swiftly close off a significant section for urgent investigations. The looming question, what does this mean for the park's landscape and its volcanic underbelly? Deep within the Wyoming section of Yellowstone Park, in a region known as Teton, an unexpected discovery was made a wide fissure that sent shockwaves through the land. Teton is a place familiar with the secrets and might of volcanoes. The rugged magnificence of the Tetons is a result of four key geological elements working in harmony. Imagine the mountain's inner core. It's composed of tough, unyielding rocks. This strength, combined with the mountain's age and vertical uplift, contributes to its majestic allure. Other mountains in Wyoming share these same sturdy rock cores and similar vertical uplifts, but they emerged over 50 to 60 million years ago, 
and through the ages, they've been shaped by erosion. In contrast, the Tetons, standing tall for less than 10 million years, have been spared this deep erosion. However, their steep slopes and towering cliffs make them prime targets for the forces of nature. According to Carlson, the Tetons embody a ceaseless battle between two opposing forces. The first is the mountain's rock resilience, its exceptional toughness, and its ability to withstand the relentless chiseling of erosion. The second is the presence of efficient transportation mechanisms that sweep away rock fragments from the mountains and their lower slopes. These intricate interactions have forged the Tetons into a realm of awe and wonder. The majority of the rocks in the Teton ranges are some of the toughest, hardest, and least permeable rocks known. This special quality makes them tough against the wear and tear caused by changes in temperature, ice, and water. They mainly consist of minerals that don't easily break down chemically, especially in the cold climate of the Tetons. Plus, the absence of weak layers in these rocks prevents them from collapsing under their weight. All of these factors work together to keep the steep walls and tall rock pinnacles intact, preserving the breathtaking views that draw people here. But don't be fooled, this landscape is far from unchanging. A diverse range of temperatures, both daily and throughout the year, causes tiny contractions and expansions in the rock particles. This repetitive movement generates stress and strain. Despite their incredible density, the Tetons' rocks eventually give way and cracks start to form. When water enters these cracks and freezes, it expands, effectively prying a slab of rock away from the mountain wall. Sometimes this process happens quickly, even overnight, or it might occur gradually during extended periods of cold weather. This ongoing interaction between the unyielding rocks and the relentless forces of nature creates a dynamic environment. The piles of fractured rock, called talus, scattered along the slopes of the higher peaks are proof of the constant struggle against erosion. However, what happens to the rock slab after it breaks away? Well, it all depends on the steepness of the mountain it fell from. If the mountain is steep, the slab might tumble and roll for a very long distance, sometimes hundreds or even thousands of feet, encountering various obstacles along the way that can cause pieces to break off. All these fragments eventually make their way down to the valley floor, or the slope, where they take a brief rest. This movement is all thanks to the force of gravity, which is like a powerful invisible hand that guides the rocks downhill. But the journey doesn't stop there. Sometimes, if the debris is mixed with snow or soaked with water, it can move slowly, almost like a glacier. This kind of moving mess can be seen on the south side of Granite Canyon, and there's even one that stretches nearly a whole mile in the valley north of Eagle's Rest Peak. Winter adds its twist to this process. After heavy snowfalls, you might hear the booming sound of snow avalanches crashing down the mountainsides. These avalanches team up with gravity, sweeping loose rocks and debris down the slopes and adding them to the growing talus piles below. In their rush, they take away trees, bushes, and soil, leaving noticeable scars on the slopes. These scars expose fresh rock surfaces, which then face the wear and tear from water and frost. Nature's agents, like snow and running water, work together to carry away these rock remnants, slowly carving into the Teton Range and revealing the powerful natural forces that shape these awe-inspiring mountains. Imagine the chaos caused when a water pipe bursts under a road. The flooding and destruction are well known. Just like that, during spring in the Tetons, the rivers swell with melting snow turning into powerful torrents that can carry a layer of water as thick as five feet. This deluge of water pushes rock debris onto the nearby Jackson Hole floor, changing the landscape dramatically. Now, news of the crack forming at Teton understandably sets off alarm bells. Carlson said experts have noticed cracks expanding in the rock buttress, and geologists are keeping a close watch on them for any signs of movement. Meanwhile, deep within Yellowstone, a fascinating process is underway. Think of the Earth as having its underground boilers, magma chambers filled with molten rock from the mantle, a layer beneath the Earth's outer crust. These chambers are like the heart of the volcano. As a result of Carlson's warning, scientists recently developed a novel technique to gauge how quickly these chambers are filling up with magma. This breakthrough method allows them to accurately estimate the amount of molten rock entering the supervolcano during its recharging phase. While this technique can't predict the exact moment when Yellowstone might erupt, it's shedding light on the inner workings of the volcanic giant. 
These pools of fiery, molten rock reside beneath the surface, crucial to the eruption process. As Professor Peter Larson, one of the study's authors, puts it, it's like the coal in a boiler. It's what's heating things and causing the explosion. Once these magma chambers are full, the landform could erupt at any time. It might happen months or even millennia after the magma has recharged. When an eruption does occur, the magma chambers burst open, releasing an astonishing amount of magma, up to 240 cubic miles, into the atmosphere, reshaping the landscape and leaving a lasting mark on the world around it. Intriguingly, beneath Yellowstone's surface lies a fiery secret rhyolite, a volcanic rock packed with explosive power. During eruptions, this silica-rich rock punches through the Earth's crust, setting off a dramatic display of nature's might. Professor Larson and his team dived into studying the magma plume that heats the rhyolite from below, helping them understand just how much magma is recharging the volcano annually. The magic ingredient, a safe, stable radioactive isotope called deuterium, was injected into Yellowstone's hot springs. These springs are connected to a web of hydrothermal vents that play a pivotal role in the volcanic system. They meticulously calculated water and heat flow by tracking the deuterium's return to normal radiation levels. This fresh approach unveiled the true scale of water and heat movement, challenging previous estimates. Now, could we thwart a Yellowstone eruption, or are we at nature's mercy? NASA, yielding to Carlson's warning, proposes a daring plan. Drilling up to six miles beneath the park's surface, then injecting high-pressure water into the supervolcano to cool it down. The hefty price tag of $3.46 billion accompanies this audacious strategy, yet NASA sees it as the most practical option. In Carlson's opinion, on the bright side, the heat might also offer a solution. It could pave the way for a geothermal power plant tapping into the Earth's warmth to generate electricity at a remarkably low cost of around 10 cents per kilowatt hour. But wait, this strategy to calm a supervolcano comes with a twist, a rather serious one. There's a chance that the method could backfire and trigger the very eruption NASA is attempting to prevent. Drilling into the top of the magma chamber is like playing with fire, as it carries substantial risks. However, there's a more cautious approach, carefully drilling from lower points to avoid triggering a disaster. Yet, even if we dare to venture into this cooling journey, it wouldn't be a swift fix. Picture this, the drilling process would be painstakingly slow, inching forward at a rate of just one meter per year. This means it could take tens of thousands of years to fully cool down the supervolcano. And even after all that effort, there's no guarantee of success within hundreds, if not thousands of years. So, if NASA's attempts don't thwart a potential Yellowstone eruption, where does that leave us? The consequences could be dire. Imagine the supervolcano erupting once again, spewing ash across thousands of miles, damaging structures, suffocating crops, and causing widespread power plant shutdowns. This scenario would indeed be catastrophic. Tucker Carlson believes that deep beneath Yellowstone National Park lies a colossal reservoir of scorching magma, about five miles deep. This magma pool is fed by a massive upwelling of molten rock surging from hundreds of miles below. This fiery energy is responsible for many of the park's iconic geysers and hot springs. As magma surges into the chamber and cools, the ground above experiences a rhythmic rise and fall, like a slow, steady heartbeat. Throughout history, this magma chamber has burst forth in eruptions multiple times. Yellowstone's history is like a fabric woven with volcanic events, with most eruptions being smaller lava flows. The most recent of these occurred about 70,000 years ago at the Pitchstone Plateau. However, what truly captures our attention is the rare but dramatic possibility of catastrophic super-eruptions. These events are defined by their extraordinary magnitude, rating an 8 or higher on the Volcano Explosivity Index, they spew out at least a staggering 1,000 cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles of material, enough to bury an entire state like Texas under five feet of debris. To put their power into perspective, these super eruptions are thousands of times more forceful than even the mightiest eruptions we've witnessed, like the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. Carlson explains that Yellowstone has undergone three such massive eruptions in its history. 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 664,000 years ago. He said the last of these, known as the Lava Creek eruption, propelled so much material from beneath the Earth's surface that it created the vast Yellowstone Caldera, a depression spanning 34 miles by 50 miles across the ground. 
Interestingly, Yellowstone isn't Earth's sole supervolcano. Geologists have stumbled upon evidence of around 47 super eruptions throughout the planet's history. One happened approximately 26,000 years ago in New Zealand's Taupo region. And then there's the remarkable Toba eruption 74,000 years ago caused by dramatic shifts in tectonic plates. This eruption triggered a global winter lasting six to 10 years, which some scientists believe nearly wiped out the early human population. Although not a hard and fast rule, history indicates that super eruptions occur roughly every 100,000 years. Among the various scenarios for a Yellowstone eruption, one of the more likely ones involves smaller lava flows, similar to what's currently happening at Iceland's Bunga volcano. This might also include a typical volcanic explosion. This type of eruption would possibly be triggered by a series of earthquakes in a particular area of the park. As magma makes its way to the surface, these earthquakes could cause the rocks above the magma to break apart. It's important to note that this kind of eruption is more likely than the larger super eruption scenarios. In the rare instance of a massive super eruption, which is an event a thousand times more powerful than a regular volcanic eruption, the warning signs would be much more noticeable. The park would experience intense seismic activity marked by numerous earthquakes. Before an eruption of this scale, it could take weeks or even months for these earthquakes to break up the rocks above the magma chamber. Tucker Carlson warns that if such a super eruption were to occur, the resulting lava flows would likely stay within the park, covering a relatively small area, roughly 40 miles across. Astonishingly, only about one-third of the erupted material would reach the atmosphere. However, the real danger comes from the volcanic ash, a mixture of shattered rock and glass that would be launched miles into the sky and spread across the country. Scientists, using historical ash deposits and advanced computer models, predict that this eruption would create an umbrella-shaped ash cloud that would spread in all directions. In this nightmarish scenario, the northern Rockies could be buried under three feet of ash, causing devastation in states like Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, Montana, and Utah. Meanwhile, areas in the Midwest might be covered with a few inches of ash, while the eastern and western coasts would receive even less. The specific distribution of ash would be influenced by the season and prevailing weather patterns. Yet any of these scenarios would be catastrophic. A colossal amount of volcanic ash unleashed by an eruption poses grave dangers. This menacing ash has the power to harm people, plants, animals, and even flatten buildings. Shockingly, just a few inches of ash, which could blanket much of the country, holds the potential to wreck farms, block roads, trigger severe breathing problems, disrupt power lines, and even short-circuit transformers. The magnitude of this eruption would paralyze North American air travel, bringing it to an abrupt standstill. But the impact wouldn't be confined to the local scale. A massive volcanic eruption can drastically influence the global climate. Volcanoes expel sulfur aerosols into the atmosphere, which bounce sunlight back into space and cool the planet. While these particles don't linger for long, their effect is remarkable. The eruption of Mount Pinatubo in 1991, for example, caused a temporary global cooling of about 1 degree Celsius, 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit, for several years. Back in 1815, the Tambora eruption chilled the earth so much that crop failures occurred worldwide, leading to famines in various regions. Yet these events pale in comparison to the colossal force that a supervolcano could unleash. But perhaps there's a glimmer of hope amid the concerns. Yellowstone has already enjoyed a long and vibrant existence, and there's a chance that its fiery temperament might be spent. It's conceivable that its most recent eruption could very well be its last. Just as all things come to an end, volcanoes too eventually extinguish their flames. The magma chamber deep below Yellowstone is a battleground of sorts, with two opposing forces at play. Heat surges upward from the Earth's depths, while colder temperatures prevail closer to the surface. If less heat streams in from below, the chamber might start to cool down over time, possibly crystallizing into a solid body of granite. It's an incredible transformation, like a molten heart gradually turning to stone. But here's another intriguing tidbit. The volcanic hotspot beneath Yellowstone isn't stationary. It's on the move, drifting slowly to the northeast. On a grand enough scale, the North American tectonic plate above this hotspot is shifting southwest. Eventually, this relentless migration could lead the hotspot to move away from beneath Yellowstone. As this separation unfolds, 
the supervolcano will, presumably, gradually fade into a peaceful slumber, concluding its epic geological saga. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.